building an office in, in Franklin. So I'm actually moving out there. There, like you said, there's a lot of great things about California, but um, raising a family is not easy here. Doing business is not easy here. Lindsay Snyder, president of In and Out Burger, a very, very popular fast food restaurant in California, has decided to move and create a new office in Eastern location in Middle Tennessee. Now, I'm from East Tennessee, so I'm a little bit partial to pals. But this is actually very exciting. If you listen to the reasons she's choosing Franklin, Tennessee, she wants to raise her family. She wants to be able to run her business. And it's not just about money. She's turned down all kinds of offers. She's trying to leave a legacy. Of all the places in the world, she's choosing Tennessee. Florida has begged us and we're still saying no. You know, the East Coast states... We're still saying no. You know, I've talked to many people who want to move to Middle Tennessee. A lot of them have values that they're trying to instill in their kids, and they want a place where they can do business, and they want a place where they can create jobs, and they choose Tennessee. They choose Middle Tennessee. And so in this video, I'm going to kind of validate that this migration is continuing. It may be slowing down slightly. I'll show you a few data points that I'm looking at. And then on the back half of this video, I am going to give you a Nashville update so you can see what's happening in the housing market. But let's start off that Nashville airport taking off 25 million passengers going through the Nashville airport. You can see it's just absolutely skyrocketing, continuing to grow. Who are the people traveling through the Nashville airport? Well, one, population growth, there's more travel, but you've got business travel and you also have tourism travel coming through there. So this is obviously very positive for the economy. Now on the migration side, U-Haul called Tennessee the number five ranked inbound migration. Now, one thing that's interesting when they when they say, oh, the state, Tennessee, inbound migration, is there's a big net negative happening on the west side of Tennessee. So when U-Haul ranks us as number five, they're ranking us as number five in spite of the fact that there's a population decline happening in Memphis, Tennessee right now. Absolutely fascinating. Now, when you look at pods, the top 20 cities with the highest number of move-ins, Nashville is ranked number nine this year. They were 13th last year. So of the top 20 cities here, four of the top 20 cities are in Tennessee. This just bodes so well to what's happening in Tennessee. The, 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 the environment here is just so strong. Now, one other way that I think about is migration staying strong? And these are the two points that I would say maybe it's slowing down just a little bit. Multifamily absorption, as reported by CoStar, is showing that it's actually lower than last year, almost 10% lower than last year. Now, 9,400 is astronomical, okay? We were averaging somewhere between five and 7,000, 22 and 23. 24, we just blew it out of the water, and now we're at 9,400, which is still lower than last year, but last year was a record-setting year. Nonetheless, here's our first data point that maybe, if it's a little bit lower, maybe migration's slowing down a little bit. You combine that with people purchasing homes, and what we can see is, is that the contract volume is basically flat, but it's been negative for a good chunk of this year. Kind of makes you wonder... Nonetheless, the inbound migration, when you compare it to U-Haul, Pods, North American Moving Services, even they have Tennessee as, as one of the high inbound states. So it really doesn't matter who you use. It just seems like everybody's saying Tennessee's on the top of the list. Now, when you think about that and then think about this Twitter post, I posted this on Twitter over a year ago, but I just said when people ask if the migration can continue... And if you look at this chart, look at this tiny little number right here, that's 264,000, that's Williamson County, Tennessee. That is the place that Lindsay Snyder, the president of In-N-Out, said she was moving, 264,000 people. That's where people choose to move when they decide to leave California. There's 39 million people in California, 12,800,000 12, in LA. There's only 7 million people in Tennessee. LA is almost twice the population of Tennessee. Nashville, only 2.1 million people. So look, it just doesn't take much to move the needle here in Tennessee. And that's part of why I think 
Nashville Home Prices have really stayed strong. It has people from all over the world continuing to move here, continuing to build and create jobs in Tennessee and in Nashville. And it just doesn't take many because we're so tiny compared to the rest of the world. I think this is one of the biggest tailwinds to the housing market. It's kind of held it up. But does that mean that this market is it doesn't have some some headwinds to it? Is the housing market just all sunshines and rainbows? You know the answer to that is no. First of all, our inventory is up 30%. Inventory is up 30%. Now it was up 33%, so the, the growth has really kind of trailed off. Uh, nonetheless, we've gotten the majority of the growth in active listings we're going to get this year. It's really not going to move up from here, but we may see more listings come on. They're just not going to build like they have in the spring. Now, when it comes to contract volume, as I mentioned, contract volume is basically flat, but it is positive. For the first time in basically three months, contract volume is positive, and this trajectory leads me to believe that we could be 5 to 10% higher than we were a year ago. If it just kind of hangs in there with the 23 trajectory. We'll see. I don't know. Median price, as you know, even though Zillow's saying that prices are lower, the values are lower, people are still continuing to pay more. The median price, 5% higher than it was last year. A lot of that, if not all of that, is mix. One of my favorite charts, price cuts is a percentage of active listings. Basically, you take all of the listings and you compare whether or not the list price is lower than the original list price. 40% this to me, I think I explained this, the, the, the listings that are out there are mispriced to the current market conditions, aka we can see price drops. However, astonishingly, median price continues to be higher than it was last year. If we look at median contract price in Middle Tennessee, it continues to be higher. That being said, we are starting to see some prices drop. Look at the median contract price per foot in Davidson County. Davidson County is Nashville, it's the core of Nashville. Median price, contract price per foot, it's lower than it was in 23 and 24. We're starting to see those prices really soften. Now, I was on my Nashville neighborhood uh, map here. You can see it here. And I was looking at some of the softer areas, the, the dark blue are where it's like really shifted towards a buyer's market or shifted away from wherever the condition was the year before. And I was looking particularly in this, it's Cumberland Heights on the map. What we can see here, 29 active listings, only one under contract, very, very dark blue, but look at the year over year price change, minus 27%. If you think that that's an error, let's take a look at this chart. There are some places that are getting major price corrections. First, supply and demand, this blue line supply, you can see how it spiked up. 30. We haven't seen 29 listings in years. Price cuts about where they were last year. And then contract volume. Contract volume is nowhere to be seen. It's much flatter than it was last year. Let's take a look at prices. Look at this. This is price discovery. Now, just so you know, this was an area that was completely taken over by Airbnbs. I've actually highlighted this area before, but we are finally seeing the numbers where what I've been explaining happening is showing up in the data. And that is massive, massive price drops. The median price is now at 416. It peaked around 571 and it continues to drop. But it was this listing that caught my eye. This listing right here, it's the very cheapest listing when we look at price per foot. It is 1303A Katy Avenue. Now, when I went to 1303 Katy Avenue, 600,000 for this. But when we zoom in, and let's just do this. Let's just zoom in and let's look at canceled and expired listings going way back. 1303, same listing, 1303A Katy Avenue, 899. Now it's listed for 600,000. I will tell you in this area, you can see the other one just went under contract. If we look at the data points, I mean, that is... It's 2021 pricing. Is it a good deal? I'll let you decide if it's a good deal, but it's certainly better pricing than $900,000. And I think the best way to describe it is this right here. In a hot market, everything sells and the difference between great, good, and acceptable is minimized. 
In a softening market, the gap in price grows. That's why we're seeing the gap between what's selling well and what's selling poorly. It's growing. We're starting to see price divergent because there's actually supply to bring value to things that in a hot market never brought value before. Great homes will always sell. Good homes need to recognize they are not great and acceptable homes are sometimes underwater. I couldn't say it better myself. This is exactly what's going on. A lot of people calling for a house crash. They're looking at homes that are either in a bad location or bad quality or bad positioning or overbuilt. And they're going, oh, there's a crash. And the truth is, is that's not true. There are crashes happening. But the fact is, is that more people are buying at higher prices today than they were last year, which is kind of surprising to me but that's just what's happening, doesn't mean that we aren't seeing major price discovery in this market. So if you are planning to buy or sell, you really want to use someone that has some experience, that's data-driven, that's thoughtful, that has a positive approach, someone that can help you understand your goals and how they fit into current market conditions. And you need to be patient. If you're a buyer or a seller, this isn't the market that it used to be Be careful out there. And with that, I hope you all have a great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Thanks a lot.